A half plus a quarter plus an eighth. These are three terms in what kind of progression? What kind? Have a look. This is a, this is a geometric progression. Here's how I know. When I'm, um, when I'm, it was because of the humidity that I turned it on, but anyway. When I look at one term to the next, the rule that gets me from one to the next and to the next and so on looks like it's multiplication by a common ratio. In this case, that ratio is a half. Fantastic. Now, because I've given you three of these, this is not just a geometric progression. I could say that this equals the partial sum of a geometric progression, right? It's the first three terms, yeah? And we know how to do partial sums. We developed our formula for partial sums for APs. We did it for GPs. Everything was fine, okay? But what we haven't tackled is what happens if I say, I don't want, just want you to add up three. I don't even want you to add up 10 or 10,000. What if I said, I wanted you to add up all of them? Now, when I say all, this is an infinite <coughs> series, right? Right at the beginning of this topic, I said some sequences end. You know, it's like 1 to 10. There you go, counting numbers on my hands. But some sequences do not. The set of all, the sequence of all odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, 9, 11, there's no end, right? This geometric sequence progression uh, series also does not end. So how can we say that it's equal to something, to some number, okay? The way that we can approach this is to think about what happens to this object as we approach infinity, as we approach infinity. If only I had an area of maths that helped me work out when I approach something but like never quite get there. Oh wait, I do. When you want to get closer and closer and closer to something, something that you're not actually ever supposed to be able to get to, like say uh, this guy, right? When you think about the object 1 over x, when you think about the hyperbola, it never gets to x equals 0, does it? But you can still think about the limit, yeah? So the limit is what I'm going to use. It's the tool I'm going to use to work out this, right? I'm going to say that the sum of this entire series is equal to the limit as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, in fact, as it approaches infinity of this series. Okay, so I want the entire series, so I'll chuck limits around all of here, dot, dot, dot. Now, because I'm saying O oh, to an n, I'm just going to make that the last term. Now, by the way, what is the last term? What is the nth term if uh, there are n terms in the entire series? Have a look. Think carefully. Zero. Hmm. Now, it's tempting to say you get to zero, right? But in fact, if you look carefully, no matter how long you go, you will never get to zero, just like this guy, right? You could go on for millions and billions of years, and you'd still never get to zero, okay? In this case, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to have one on two to the n, yeah? Because look, the first term, is 1 on 2. The second term is 1 on 2 squared. The third term is 1 on 2 cubed. So the nth term will be 1 on 2 to the n. Okay? So I'm trying to think about this object with this limit applied. Okay? Now thankfully, I actually know what the sum of this whole thing is because this, the way I've written it in here, this guy is a partial sum, right? Do you see that object there is finite? The whole object is not, but the thing in the brackets is, okay? So this is a partial sum. That means I can use my formula for a partial sum, yeah? Uh, let's have a look. I've got the limit flying out here. Uh, just like when we did it in first principles, it is a bit tiresome to write limit, limit, limit. Um, Sounds like a frog saying ribbit, 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 but you have to, you have to, because without putting the limit on, it's a finite object. But when you do put the limit on, it's an infinite object, and these are quite different. Like, there's an infinite amount of difference between finite and infinite, okay? So I've put the limit there, and now I think, well, what is actually the sum? Well, you've got a formula. In fact, um, no, I didn't bring my other colors with me. You might remember there's two forms that we learnt for this GP, okay? They both start with A, and they're both fractions, but they slightly differ. Do you remember what? Give me one of them, either one, doesn't matter. R 
to the n minus 1, which means on the bottom there's going to be r minus 1. So that's version 1, if you like. Or you can start with an a, you still have a fraction. What's the difference? Yeah, just things are flipped around, yes? Yeah? So I would have 1 minus r to the n and 1 minus r. Okay, now have a think. Look at what kind of series we have, particularly have a look at the common ratio that gets you from term to term. Which do you think might be easier to work with? I think the second one, because if you stick a half in here, you get a negative. That means you get a negative, uh, double negatives. Gross, I'd prefer to go over here. Okay? In fact, basically, when r is between negative 1 and 1, we basically use this version here. Okay? Uh, did I say that right? No, between 0 and 1. Sorry, there you go. Okay? So, I'm going to use that form with all of the appropriate pieces. What's a? What's the first term? It's a half. There it is. So, brackets, let's have a look. A half. I've got 1 minus. Now, coincidentally, in this case, the ratio is also a half. So, be careful. It's the whole ratio raised to the power of n, like so. And then on my denominator, I have... Yeah, 1 minus r. There you go. Hey. You'll talk to me later. <laughs> There's the partial sum, end bracket. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to deal with this limit in a second, but before I do that, there's plenty I can tidy up here. Yeah? For example, what's the denominator end up being? A half. And I've got a half there. So it's like, bam, bam. Great. Okay. So now what do I get left with? Well, let's write this properly without the cancelled bits. Limit as n approaches infinity of this thing. That's all that gets left behind. So it's going to be 1 take away this. Okay. Think, 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 think. This is what I mean by abstract, right? This object doesn't exist in reality. At least not the kind of reality we're used to dealing with. How do I deal with this? We've dealt with limits before. We have sometimes had to do manipulation because it's like, oh, you can't put in, you can't just substitute the number in, like h equals zero in first principles. Can I put this, can I, can I put it into here? Infinity is not a number, but it's an idea. It's a really huge quantity, right? And what I'm applying it to is this number. Okay, so in other words, what that means is this number is going to get enormous. A hundred, a thousand, a million, and so on. When you multiply a half by itself that many times, what happens to it? It gets tiny, right? It approaches zero. But, but, because I'm talking about limits, I can say, I can actually treat it as zero. So I can say this is one take away zero. Right? I've evaluated the limit now. No more n's, so that's why I can stop saying limit. So this apparently one. equals 1. Now, this is a way of saying, hey, you've got this infinite object, right? But let's place a, sorry, there's, yeah, infinite object. Let's place a finite value on it if it can follow these rules because we didn't pull any rabbits out of a hat. That really does approach zero. Right? Not all sequences will do this. For example, if I didn't give you a half plus a quarter, if I gave you the reciprocals, 2 plus 4 plus 8, etc. That's not converging on anything. That's not going toward anything. It's just getting bigger and bigger forever. But this guy, because it gets smaller and smaller forever, it does approach something. So what we do is because we've worked out a sum, but it's not just any sum. We've used limits to get there. The title of this object is called the limiting sum. Okay? So, another way of thinking about this is what do the partial sums approach? What do the partial sums approach? To help you see that a little clearer, watch what happens if I actually write a few more terms out. Okay? So, the next term, of course, will be 1 over 16, then 1 over 32, and I'll just do one more. Now, if you think about what the partial sums are, these numbers are, oh, I keep forgetting. I left my other color on my desk, that's fine. No, no spares that have been left around. If I think about the partial sum of the first, humor me, one term. What's the partial sum of the first one term? It's just the first term. Right, so I'm just gonna write it above and I'm gonna put it in a circle. That's the first partial sum. What's the second partial sum? It's a half plus a quarter, which is, Three quarters. Did you see that? 
if I take the third partial sum, three quarters, that's um, how many eighths is that? That's six eighths. So when you add another one, you get seven eighths. Now, can you follow the pattern without having to actually do this with the denominator? You're going to get uh, 15 sixteenths, right? 15 sixteenths, and then you're going to get 31 30 seconds and 63 60 fourths, and so on. So do you see how the limiting sum is, it literally means, what do these partial sums approach? They clearly approach one, don't they?